Hello class, welcome to Geometry Lesson 7.2, Similarity Transformations. So we want to address a couple of questions. What makes a transformation a similarity transformation? And what is the relationship between a pre-image and the image resulting from a similarity transformation? And we want to determine whether uh, figures that are given are similar. All right, so we want to be able to describe a similarity transformation, the theme of this lesson. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, start with uh, the similarity transformations and uh, what they represent. So uh, first off, in the last lesson, we discussed dilations. And you may recall that a dilation enlarges or reduces uh, the size of a figure. And uh, the angles stay uh, preserved uh, in the pre-image and the image, but the size changes and therefore the side lengths uh, are not preserved. So for example, in this pre-image, uh, it got dilated and it got um, enlarged uh, to the uh, image on the right, and but the angles are preserved. So a, di a dilation creates an image that is what we call similar to the pre-image. So the pre-image and the image are not congruent, as you would expect from a congruent transformation. Uh, a dilation is not a rigid motion, so uh, it makes a image that is not congruent, but what we call similar. So two figures are said to be similar if they have corresponding angles that are congruent and corresponding sides that are proportional, aka related by a, you know, aka scale factor. So there's a scale factor here um, involved. So um, proportional uh, in the sense is really um, what we mean by similar, that the figures are proportional. So given two figures that are similar, there exists what we call a similarity transformation that maps the image or the pre-image to the image. So um, this similarity transformation uh, we'll talk about, uh, you know, is composed of a couple of things. So it's actually composed of uh, one or more rigid motions, otherwise known as congruence transformations, and a dilation. So if we, if we were to take this pre-image and map it to the image, well, there's a couple of things that we would have to do. First off, we would have to move the pre-image to the right and down in order to um, overlap with the image. And then we would have to uh, dilate it, enlarge it, so that it actually overlaps with the image enti entirely. So we're going to go ahead and demonstrate this, but a similarity transformation results in an image that is similar to the pre-image, and we'll show you this uh, similarity transformation now. So if we were to take this and translate it to the right and down, a translation is an example of a congruence transformation or a rigid motion, and then we would have to dilate it, in this case enlargement. So this, this is an example of a similarity transformation involving a congruence transformation, in this case a translation and a dilation. So this is our similarity transformation. We've done the dilation first, or the translation first, and the dilation second. Remember that the order is left to right in a uh, composition, or right to left rather, the order uh, in a composition is from right to left uh, as opposed to the usual left to right. So the symbol for similarity is uh, this, uh, this symbol which is the tilde symbol. Uh, looks like the tilde symbol. And uh, what we, we say for example if we have a, uh, a couple of quadrilaterals say A, B, C, D and A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime we can say that they're similar by um, just using this tilde symbol in between them. So if we were to use uh, this example, because there exists a similarity transformation from ABC to A prime, B prime, C prime, then we could say that triangle ABC is similar to triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. All right, so let's look at um, our example here. Uh, describe a possible similarity transformation for each pair of similar figures shown and then write a similarity statement. So let's start with the uh, one on the left. What we wanna do is we wanna take this black triangle and we want to translate it so that it the C lines up with C prime. So we're gonna do a translation, bring it down, and then what we're gonna do is gonna rotate it. So let's rotate that triangle around point C or C prime. 
and then we can train uh, we can uh, dilate it and then do an enlargement dilation from point C or C prime and then now we can see that we have a similarity transformation that involves a translation from C to C prime followed by a rotation about some angle but about point C followed by a dilation some kind of enlargement in which n is um, greater than 1 from point C. All right, so now uh, let's look at part B. So what we can do, if we want to get the black quadrilateral to overlap with the orange quadrilateral, we're going to try to do a reflection here. So we're going to reflect this about a um, line A, so some kind of line, um, imaginary line between these two in, in the halfway point between Z and Z prime. And so if we do that, then we go from this black triangle to this um, sort of like a red, or this uh, the black quadrilateral to this red one. And you can see that it's a, it's a nice mirror image on either side from W to W prime, Y to Y prime, and from Z to Z, or X to X prime, and so on. And then now that they sort of overlap, we're going to do a dilation, a reduction, and reduce the size, and now they overlap perfectly. So we're, we went ahead and described our similarity transformation as follows, a reflection about cross line A, followed by some kind of dilation um, about point Z. So then therefore our similarity statement, so uh, since we want to write a similarity statement, since these are similar because there exists a similarity transformation, then we can say that triangle ABC is similar to triangle A prime B prime C prime. And then similarly, uh, similar here, we know that um, Z match to Z prime, Y match to Y prime, and so on. So we can say that quadrilateral XY or WXYZ is similar to quadrilateral W prime, X prime, Y prime, Z prime. All right, so let's look at another example. We have um, a triangle, this is our pre-image, and we want to do a transformation on this triangle, and we wanna see, is this transformed figure similar to um, this pre-image, this orange triangle? Well, we know that this is a similarity transformation, and because this is a similarity transformation, that means that and we know it's a similarity transformation because we have a dilation and we have a rigid motion. And because it's a similarity transformation, that means that the image of this triangle is going to be similar to the pre-image. However, I'm going to go ahead and uh, demonstrate how to actually draw this and come up with the, um, the image. I'm going to do that. But we know right off the bat because it's a similarity transformation that, yes, they are similar triangles. Uh, so we'll go ahead and answer that. So yes. Um, as there exists a similarity transformation from triangle ABC to, for example, triangle A prime, B prime, C prime, which we'll call, we'll refer to as that. And so therefore they are similar. Now let's go ahead and do this. Uh, we want to do the dilation first. So in, in order to do the dilation, we're going to double the coordinates here. So uh, for example, A, which is 5, negative 2, will transform under the first transformation, D. Uh, it's going to double in size. So it's going to uh, be where it's going to have 5 times 2 is uh, 10. Negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. So that's the first transformation followed by the second transformation, which is a translation. You're going to add one to the X coordinate, subtract three from the Y coordinate. So you have nine, negative seven. And so that's going to be the first coordinate here. So it's going to be right here and that's going to be, that's going to be outside of the shape, but that's okay. It's going to be somewhere around here. And we'll refer to that, that as A prime. And then uh, we'll do B real quick and C. So we're going to transform this by dilating. So it'd be twice as big, negative two, six. 
and then we'll do what we did earlier. We subtract or add one to the X, subtract three from the Y, and then we'll finish out with C. Double the coordinates. Subtract one here and add, or no, add one. I meant to add one and subtract three here. All right, so we have this coordinate, so that's A prime, this is C prime, and then finally we have B prime. Uh, which if you notice, uh, interestingly enough, it says we uh, double the size here, but B prime ends up being in the same location. Interestingly enough, um, as we double it and then do this, and so we can go ahead and draw our figure. And so these triangles are said to be similar. All right, let's, look, let's do another example where we find the coordinates. Uh, so we have a couple of similarity transformations, just like example three. And so we know that uh, the order for a composition is right to left. So we're going to do the reflection first and then the dilation second. Okay, so um, we're going to transform 8 to 2. So let's do the first transformation. Remember that a reflection across the x-axis of a given coordinate, um, the reflection rule about the x-axis states that you're going to, um, you're going to change the y-coordinate to its opposite sign. And that's how you reflect about the x-axis. And then remember that to do a dilation about the center, you simply multiply the, the coordinates by the scale factor. So over here, we're gonna just convert the Y coordinate to its opposite. And then for the second um, transformation, we're going to, in this case, we're gonna quadruple the size. So we gotta do eight times four, and then negative two times four. All right, that takes care of this transformation. Now let's do this um, part B. This one's gonna be the first one, second and third. Now the rule for rotations about the origin. So if you wanna do a rotation 90 degrees about the origin, where you're going to switch the Y and the X coordinate. So for example, if I wanted to do um, if I wanted to rotate this about 90 degrees this way, well then it's going to end up looking kind of like that. And it's going to be at negative one, two. So the rule is that you switch the X and the Y and then this first coordinate becomes negative. Okay. So that's the uh, rule in general. So let's go ahead and um, use that rule for the first one. And then for the D2, we know the rule for dilation. So let's talk about the rule for Y equals X. The rule for a reflection about Y equals X uh, states that you're going to switch the Y and the X coordinates. So X is Y and Y is X. All right, so let's go ahead and perform that transformation. So let's do the first one, which is the rotation. You're going to switch the X and the Y coordinates and then the first coordinate is going to be negative. There you go, negative 2 and 8. That takes care of that first one. And then we're going to take negative 2, 8, and we're going to dilate it. We're going to double the size of the coordinates because that's a 2 there. So 2 times 2 is 4, 8 times 2 is 16. And then finally, we will perform a reflection about y equals x. So we switch the coordinates here. All right. And uh, that is going to be it for this transformation, and we are done. That is it for the video, guys. I hope you found this useful. Uh, I hope you took a few things from this. And as usual, I'll see you in the next one.